I'm Michael Thomason. I'm a veterinarian at Nebraska Equine Veterinary Clinic in Omaha, Nebraska. And I just wanted to take a second and talk to you guys about floating a horse's teeth. So it's a procedure that we do commonly um, in that every horse at different times in their life and their career are going to need uh, to be floated. So there's a lot that we can talk about. So floating truly just involves um, the filing or rasping of teeth. Most of the time we do that on sharp enamel points. So they develop points on the outside of their upper teeth and the inside aspect of their lower teeth. Um, so that happens to every horse, regardless of age, breed, sex, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that every horse will develop um, sharp enamel points. So those points can cause issues with um, being comfortable with the bit it can interfere with chewing. Sometimes they'll have sharp enough points that it causes ulcerations on their teeth or on their cheek or their tongue. Um, and so that can be very painful for them. So that's kind of the routine aspect of the float. If you think of a horse's teeth or a horse's mouth as kind of a jigsaw puzzle, if you have proper wear, you will have all of their, all of their teeth are wearing together. So if you take a tooth out or it breaks or something like that, um, and there's one missing, then the opposing tooth is going to have a chance to continue to erupt um, and not be worn off. And so that's a situation that's going to require uh, some attention beyond what is normally required for the routine float of it. So that, that's something that we need to be aware of. We see that commonly in older horses that maybe are losing teeth as they get older then that opposing teeth will, tooth will continue to erupt and um, cause an issue. So another question that we get is, when do we start floating a horse? Um, uh, what age do we start floating a horse? So I think that most of the time, uh, the first time that we're doing a dental float is somewhere between maybe 18 months, two years, sometimes up to three years of age. Um, that's when we start floating them. That doesn't mean that we don't do anything in the mouth before then. So we'll remove wolf teeth before then. Um, sometimes they'll have uh, some type of malalignment that um, a baby that will we'll take a look in their mouth before. We may not address it, but we'll take a look in their mouth before. So just because we don't float them until maybe two years of age, it doesn't mean that we're not doing something in the mouth. So somewhere around that age, we'll begin um, to float them. So baby teeth uh, tend to develop, deciduous teeth tend to develop sharper edges sooner. So it's not uncommon for a two to five year old horse to have to be floated maybe every six months just to keep them comfortable while they're in training because of the sharp edges that form. And then kind of between maybe six and 15 or so, that kind of middle aged horse that has all of their adult teeth, most of those are going to be somewhere in the 12 to 18 month range um, as far as interval between floating. Um, and then we have on the flip side, just like the babies require it more frequently, a lot of older horses that I mentioned earlier will lose a tooth or break a tooth or something. Uh, they wear their teeth unevenly and they will require um, care sometimes up to every six months. So that's maybe the frequency and when we start um, to to float them. Um, we do use um, power floats, so it's the principles are the same between a hand float, which is just a rasp with a handle, and the power float. So the procedure itself is the same. Um, there's just, that's the big difference, motorized versus uh, manual. Um, so I think that there are two essentials. It doesn't matter if you're gonna float by hand or with a power float, but two essentials to a good float include proper sedation, and a speculum. So you want to be able to have the horse sedated quietly so that you can look and feel each tooth in the mouth and that speculum just lets us open the mouth up so that we can truly examine each tooth. So those are kind of the high points of what a float is, when and how frequently we should um, have our horses floated, and then um, the difference kind of between uh, manual and power float. I think at the end of the day, each horse should have an annual oral exam and then float as needed.